Hey my good friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. Today we're looking at something rather interesting. This is the 2021 Toyota Tacoma Trail, a new trim grade based on the SR5 that brings a little bit more off-road cred to the deal. So I'm going to show it to you inside and out. We're going to take it for a drive and I'm going to tell you what I really think. Before we get out in the test drive, let's talk about what we have here. This is the trail based on the SR5, and as tested, this one's $41,000 and some change, kind of a few extra options on it. And I'm not gonna talk about the overall styling so much because you've seen this truck before. It's only been around since 2016 uh, in its current state, and pretty much underneath, it's been around since 2005. So you're familiar with it if you've been alive and breathing more than a minute. but. As we look at the trail, this has a few things that set it apart above and beyond the standard SR5. And the first thing right up front is a limited style trim grade grille. This does have halogen headlights on it. Down in the lower fascia, there are fog lights. The wheels on this one are an upgrade. These are dark painted 16 inch wheels. And what's most important here is the off-road tires. Also, as we go down the side, you'll see that all of the emblems on the truck, the Tacoma, the SR5, are in satin black. From this angle, you can see that we've got the five foot bed on our tester and on the rear tailgate, optional lettering for Tacoma that's in black, a pretty spendy option, I might add. The other logos on the back in black come with the trail trim grade. One of the key features of the trail trim grade are these lockable storage boxes here in the bed. They're made of plastic, as is the entire bed. This one on this side is insulated. This one is not. They claim you can use this one as an ice chest. Now, the reality is you could use them both as an ice chest, but this one's going to keep your stuff colder longer. Now, they do take up a good amount of space back here, as you can tell. If you were planning on using this to haul motorcycles or ATVs or other gear, they're going to probably get in the way. But if you're going to use this primarily for camping, this kind of thing can really come in handy. The interior of the Tacoma Trail has a few things that set it apart from the standard SR5, and that is the cloth seating. These are unique seats with a different cloth pattern and they have tan stitching accents. On the floor, all weather floor liners and also optioned on this are embroidered floor mats. The rest of this interior is essentially base SR5 trim, which means a lot of hard plastic. There are some soft trims here and there, but it is a base to mid-level Toyota pickup truck inside. One thing I have to point out is very much like the exterior, which you find very familiar, is that this is a design that's been around for a while. This truck is basically set around the bones of the 2005 Tacoma, which even though this is technically a different generation from that starting in 2016, the bones and a lot of the underlying structure is the same. My point, the seating position in this and a lot of the comfort and design as it relates to how you live in this vehicle is aged. This steering wheel, while it does tilt and telescope, doesn't quite have the adjustment range to go with these seats. The seating position is such that you don't quite have the adjustment range even with these power seats to kind of get into the same type of comfortable position you can get in a lot of the competitors now. As I look forward to the instrument cluster, even though it does have a digital screen in the center which allows some customization, it's a very basic decade-old design. The center stack, although it is very simple and I do have upgrades like the climate control, I still see a lot of blank plates and things that remind me I don't have a lot of the options here. That's the kind of design ethos that most brands have thrown out the window decades ago. The rear seat of the Tacoma is a pretty tight, compact space. Even though this is a mid-sized truck, we're still in compact truck land here. These seats are set for my height about 5'8", 5'9", with my boots on. And as you can see, my knees are just touching these seats. So if I had a six-footer sitting up here with that seat further back, I'd be in trouble. I'm almost in trouble now. And as you can see, the seating position also a little bit on the low side. My knees are perched up in a, in a, and I just wouldn't want to sit here very long. Let me just put it that way. I'm in a position of compromise. Let's just say that. Uh, headroom, reasonably good. I've got about an inch and a half above my head. And as I look down in the center console, I do not have vents back here. There are no charging ports back here. This is a pretty Spartan basic place here in the back seat of this truck. Now I will point out that these do fold up, these lower cushions, and you can see some storage bins and boxes down at the bottom. 
and if you fold the backs forward there's also storage behind the seats so they have utilized this area back here to give you storage that you need but when it comes to comfort we're on the low side the main overriding power here is the fact that this is a very old truck its bones especially are very old and that comes to four in the areas of comfort how the seating positions are laid out especially in the back seat and we talked about that versatility and storage is pretty good for this class material quality is okay but i think as i look at the price tag as tested about forty one thousand dollars and some change we're missing a lot of features that you're going to find in competitors trucks at this price so the interior gets four out of five stars the infotainment system in this truck is an eight inch touchscreen and this is an optional system 1700 bucks gets you dynamic navigation and a few other things the thing i have to point out here is that at first blush there's a lot of glare on the screen it's not really shielded from the sun so sometimes visibility isn't as good as it could be and audio quality even though this is an optional system that almost two thousand dollars worth of optional the audio quality isn't that good either this is not the top end jbl audio system and the thing i really need to pick on is the fact that this is called dynamic navigation what does that mean well that means that if you want it to work you have a subscription okay so this isn't native standalone navigation in this truck at some level you have to have a service in which you have to pay for and so toyota charging 1700 bucks for something that you then have to invest money in to have keep working um it doesn't it just doesn't pass a sniff test for me so this system while the menus are laid out reasonably good very similar to other toyotas the graphics are decent i think that it could be improved not only in its visibility but in the value especially at a 1700 dollar option this infotainment system gets three and a half out of five stars all right my friends so as we go for a drive the first question i always like to ask is how does it go yep and 60. I'd say it goes leisurely. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's kind of a relaxing acceleration drag race. All right, I'm just kind of teasing around a little bit. Under the hood here is Toyota's venerable 3.5 liter V6. It's an engine found on almost anything larger than a Camry. Although this is a variation of this engine specifically tuned for this truck. It has 278 horsepower and 265 pound feet of torque. Now, if you're much of a study, you'll look around and you'll notice that most of the competition now offers quite a bit more horsepower in their top engines. General Motors offers more, Nissan offers more, the Ford Ranger comes with a single turbocharged four-cylinder engine that outperforms this in a number of ways. This does come with a six-speed automatic transmission, which is better than the old five-speed that came with the four-liter back in the old days. This is rated at 18 MPG city, 22 highway, and 20 MPG combined. Not bad for a mid-sized truck. I found this week though, 17 combined is the best I could get. And that is lower, I might add, than the city rating from the EPA. It's thirsty, and that's because this engine has to work hard to get this truck going down the road. And when you do make it work hard, you do hear it. It's a noisy motor. So in the overall look at this powertrain, while it is a welcome change in 2016 from the old four liter, it still isn't quite up to snuff compared to what a lot of the competitors out there offer. This powertrain gets three and a half out of five stars. When it comes to ride and handling, this is a chassis that's been around for quite a long time. Now that doesn't mean it's bad, it just means it's been around for a long time, since 2005 essentially, and with the 2016 redesign, it had a few tweaks to it, but it's essentially the same bones underneath. So what that means is this drives like a Toyota truck from, well, almost 20 years ago. They've done a lot of work to make it a little bit more refined. They've done a lot of work to make it a little bit quieter, but it still has a lot of the Toyota-isms that date back over a decade. Around town though, I do find it pretty quiet and with these larger off-road tires that come on this particular trim grade, it does tend to be a little bit more rubberized and a little bit more isolated from some of the imperfections that you find in the road. It is quiet on the highway and especially out here in my neighborhood, it's a comfortable daily driver. This chassis does have the jitters sometimes and the other big thing I've noticed is that in using the brakes, 
They tend to be a little bit tough to modulate sometimes. They don't have a lot of feeling to them and they tend to really require a lot of effort to get this truck stopped, especially from higher speeds. And I think in part that goes to the fact that we still have drum brakes on the back axle. Really? Really? In 2021, we still have drum brakes? I will point out this is the only truck available anywhere that still has drum brakes on it. Toyota, it's time to step it up. So fine, I've got my frustrations out on Toyota for still putting drum brakes on a truck in this century. I really want to find out how this drives off the pavement. Out here on the desert washboard road is my favorite place to bring a truck or an SUV because while this isn't necessarily testing an off-road capability, this is seeing how well built this thing is, how solid is the structure, how well tuned is the suspension to absorb all the roughness that you get when you really use the truck off the pavement. And like other Toyota Tacomas I've tested in the past, what I'm finding here is that while there is a lot of hay to be made about how old this truck is, it's pretty solid. It's pretty solid. This is a chassis that's been around for a long time. It's well proven. And especially in this trim with these large off-road tires, it has good isolation from the rhythmic vibration that this washboard surface serves up. The one thing I am noticing is a little bit of jitteriness that something that I've seen out there on the pavement and it does tend to be amplified out here on the washboard surface, but I'm not getting rattling in the chassis, I'm not getting rattling in the steering, and most important, I'm not getting rattling in the structure or any of the interior trim. So, yes, it's old, but it's solid. It's solid. That's what people keep coming back to buy these things for. So chassis gets four out of five stars. All right, my friends, the last thing I like to talk about is value. And that's really important when you're spending $41,000 on a mid-sized pickup truck, right? And so the first thing we really have to talk about is the fact that this is the number one selling pickup truck in its class by a long shot. Since this truck has been introduced, we've had Ford Ranger, GMC Canyon, Chevrolet Colorado, all new. We have a brand new Nissan Frontier coming out next year. A lot of competition has really been bubbling up since the 2016 Tacoma rolled out as we see it. But this is still number one by yards, okay? And so when I look at things like price, when I look at competitiveness, when I look at options pricing and what you get for the money, I'm looking at this truck and I'm going, does it offer everything that the competitors offer for the money? No, it doesn't, okay? It's old. It still has drum brakes on it for Christ's sake, okay? But when we look at you know, the reliability and we look at the quality, this is a truck that's got a reputation out there that's hard to beat. Everyone looks at Toyota, they think it's gonna last forever, I'm gonna get 400,000 miles out of it, it's still gonna be worth what I paid for it in 10 years. Now I'm being a little bit sarcastic there, but having owned some Toyotas, that's not far off base, okay? Most people have Toyotas in their lives have things like that to say. But that said, looking at reality here, um, not the most horsepower in class, it's very old, but it's solid. But I have to look at competitiveness here, okay? So pricing, value pricing, not so good, I don't think. I think this is a lot of money for a truck that still has cloth seats with no heaters, not that much horsepower, a lot of things missing for that money. So I put value at three and a half stars. That's just where I put it. You put that in with everything else we've already talked about, we're at three and a half stars for the review. It just goes to show, just because you're the most popular kid in the class doesn't mean you're the best student. But people are still gonna elect you class president. So there you go. If you like the video you just saw, click right here, see my latest one, or better yet, click down there and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Either way, stay tuned.